Senator Manchin. I don't know if I can follow that. Very good. Um, first of all, I'm going to thank you all for your tremendous service to our country, all three of you. And uh, just a few things. I, everything's been said so well and stated our challenges that we have and where we are doing well and where we can improve, and, and, and all of us agree. Um, I have d my differences with the administration on the fast, the, the, um, the speed of which they're trying to put electric vehicles and we can't supply this uh, support that we need. We don't have access to all the critical minerals. We don't have the processing. We don't have the anodes and cathodes. But by God, they're, they're hell and determined to put electric vehicles out and be uh, relying on China for that. So I have, I have tremendous concerns there, and, and they know it, and I'll work through that. The thing I want to bring up is that whether it be the ships or the missiles or the guns and the bullets and everything else that we have to do and what Ukraine has shown us in the world, I've been thinking about one thing that makes us different than everyone else. It's our allies that trust us, believe in us. More than that is the compassion of humanity that we have, the aid. With all my disagreements I have here lately with the administration, I want to thank you all for increasing the aid budget to our allies and our friends and people in need. My grandmother used to say that, Joe, the best thing you can do is feed somebody. It changes everything, changes everything. And for that, is any other country do what we do in human aid? We, as I'm understanding, we've never put a condition on food or health care or any of that, have we? Ms. Sen Senator, we have not, and you're 100% right. If you just, just take one very quick example, World Food Program, critical. The United States provides more than 40% of its budget. China and Russia each pr provide less than 1% of its budget. I could go down the what, list what? of uh, organizations that are providing Secretary vital Blinken, I really think all of us, I haven't, we haven't even talked about aid. I've been here for a couple hours, and we haven't talked about the strength that we have as the United States of America. It's the, it's, it's the heart and soul. It's the humanitarian. It's just everything that we are. And, and, and so when I go to another country, I says, when things get tough, man, you've got to depend on someone. It's going to be the U.S. Ain't nobody coming. And I think they want to do. We can have all the military might in the world, and we have to be able to be competitive. But with that and having our allies that are really rally behind us and fight for us, to me, that means almost everything. And I said, that makes us different. And as long as we do that uh, and continue that aid, and I think you all showed a little bit of a budget increase, about $3 billion, but it's money well invested. We're not spending it, we're investing it. Um, and anything that you think that we can do along those lines there with the food and the healthcare necessities that people have around the world and developing nations. Also, I don't think that we get credit enough unless our military is involved or we have str strict oversight of how this food and all this humanitarian aid is distributed. I feel good when I see our military distributing it, uh, uh, General, uh, but sometimes I know in some of the well-meaning uh, well well, well meaning, uh, programs that are doing it and aid doesn't seem to get to the right people or we get credit for it as a country. Yeah, and, and Senator, again, I couldn't agree with you more. One of the things we did uh, during COVID in providing vaccines free of charge with no political strings attached to country after country around the world through an international uh, entity called COVAX is we also made sure that it was branded and so that people knew in a variety of ways that when they were getting vaccines that were saving their lives, it was coming from the United States. Oh. And as I was traveling around the world, country after country has thanked us profusely for coming to their aid in that moment of need and in a way different than any other country on earth. Well, if we can just get our act together on the other things that we're trying to compete and not being relying on until we're able to produce it ourselves. And the only thing I've said, we cannot change. We cannot change the values uh, of other countries that don't have our same values. And that's basically the love of family and the love of our religious freedoms and a love of democracy. We can't change that. We get caught up in some of this sometime, and I hope we don't. But, and I'll say this, and I'll close on this. I've been around long enough to remember that if we didn't fight in Vietnam, the communists were coming to this country. I remember basically the Gulf War, that if we didn't go over there and protect Kuwaiti oil, it would disrupt the economic markets. I remember the Iraq War, if we didn't fight, declare war in Iraq, that we would have weapons of mass destruction used on us. In my lifetime, this is the only support or involvement that we've been with a war that's the most just cause I've ever seen. Exactly what the United States of America should be is that light on, on that beaming mountain, basically, shining brightly 
saying that we will defend democracy wherever people seek it, and we will make sure that we don't leave them. And I hope that we maintain that posturing, especially with Ukraine. My grandfather used to say when I got in trouble, he says, honey, I'll be behind you until your back hurts, until your chest hurts, I'm sorry, until your chest hurts. I said, Papa, that's all I need. He'll always be behind me. If the United States stays behind Ukraine until their chest hurts, they'll know we're with them forever. We've got to win that, and we've got to continue to be committed in our allies. So I thank you, all of you, all three of you, for your services. And Secretary Armando, I know you lost your mother, and I, I've been thinking about that, and it's very difficult. I hope you all are getting through this. All you have is the memories, and they've they're, got to be beautiful. But thank you all. Thank you.